Okay, so before we start on our C++ journey, we first need a compiler. And for this, uh, we will be using the winlibs compiler. Okay, and let me just uh, Google it up so that we could have it downloaded first. So we have here uh, winlibs being W compiler for Windows and all we have to do is to click this link using winlibs.com. You can just use the keyword winlibs and I'll be clicking it now. And yes, we have here winlibs standalone build of GCC and Ming W64 for Windows. And uh, this compiler set has uh, basically have a lot of option and what i like about this compiler is that it contains or it does have the bleeding edge version of gcc or the latest version of gcc now when selecting a compiler uh, so what you can see we are using a universal c uh, runtime uh, this is a library that is built in in Windows 10 uh, and above. And uh, for this, uh, you could select between two different threading models. One is from Microsoft. Okay. the And the other one is using the standard Linux uh, POSIX thread. And so, for this, I'll be downloading the POSIX uh, threads version. Okay, and you could also have a another type of compilers like LLVM, Silang, but yeah, maybe we could just get them all and download the Windows 64 version. Okay, so I'll be downloading it now. And yes, uh, yeah, it's uh, downloading. Okay, and basically, it is, uh, yeah, complete already. Okay, and it's worth 139 MB. Now, the next step, okay, once we are done downloading the, the compiler itself, let's go now to our download directory. So, I have here my downloads, and you would see here a zip file containing our winlibs compiler and all we have to do is to extract it here or in any preferred subdirectory that you want so for me i'll be i'll just be extracting it here and uh, you would see a ming w64 that is actually generated and let's take a closer look for a while while it is loading uncompressing okay so we have 30 percent and okay it's done already and uh if we are to go on the subdirectory ming w64 as you would see this contains a lot of tools and libraries that we could use and the main uh path of our compiler is under the bin subdirectory and so uh, this is basically uh, we have to set it up first on our environment variables okay and let's say for example uh, if I'm going to access my command prompt our goal here is for us to be able to execute GCC Okay, in any subdirectory that we want, and uh, for this, it's not yet in our system variables. Okay, and so uh, what we wanted to do here is to copy where uh, bin is located in our extracted directory. Let's try to copy this one and uh, open uh, our environment variable settings. Okay, so there you go. So we have here environment variables and all we have to do here is to add, okay, or edit the path 
and add okay so let's try to add one there you go so we have the main w64 bin okay and just to make sure we we might want to add it on the system variables also and yes click on new then we have it here main w64 bin okay there you go so let me launch again our windows command prompt and uh, we wanted to check if uh, all things are okay so we have here gcc minus version oh yeah but it's working already minus minus version i forgot okay so we have here the latest version of gcc however later on in our uh, compiler configuration we will be using the x86 uh main w uh, g plus plus okay uh for this one okay so we have main w g plus plus x for us to to use on the settings of our compiler now since all things are okay and we are now ready to you know uh, create our program let's now try to download first our visual studio code for as for our ide and for this uh, let me uh, go directly to download using the google search engine you could just look for it and click on the download section and so I have here a, a user installer for Windows 10. Okay, so let me just uh, click on this one, Windows 10. Nah, I, I think I, I clicked the wrong one, which is X64, the user installer. Okay, and yeah, I think it's done already. Yeah. And let me just check. Yes, it's already done. And if I'm going to access the files, we have VS Code user set up. Okay, so all it's 96 MB. And all I have to do is to double click on this one. VS Code user set up. I accept the agreement. I click on next. Then yes, add to path, install. And let's just wait for it to be done. and there you go and of course we would like to launch the visual studio code right away so i'll be clicking on finish and yes we have here our uh visual studio code that is running and uh, at first run uh, there are some prompts here we have windows subsystem no i do not want to install i just want a simple one and the next thing that you have to do here is to click what theme that uh, you wanted to use and for me i just like the dark high contrast okay mm, dark modern or dark high contrast that would be fine and yeah let me just yeah mark this done and we could start already however the next step here inside the visual studio code is to install the extensions that we need because visual studio code supports a diff uh, a lot of programming language so we have to install an extension for it and uh, under extensions okay you would see a lot of them so you just type in c++ on its search bar okay and all i want you to do is to install this c++ intellisense debugging and code browsing by by microsoft and nothing else okay yeah but but there's another one i'm sorry and we have uh here we would like to install this one okay and to make a lot things easier also um we could use well it's installing let's just try to wait for it and another one is 
what we call uh, this code runner. Uh, this is just a simple utility that enables you to run a lot of programming language to sim uh, by just a click of the code. Okay, so I'm going to install it now. Also the code runner. Okay, and they are both installed. And uh, let me just close this one and go to the marketplace again. This is the marketplace. And if we are going to remove the details on the search bar, you would see here that we have two extensions that are installed already. Okay, and just to make sure all things are okay, I'll try to uh, restart my Visual Studio Code. So I have here uh, Visual Studio Code. Okay. And yes, I think we could start already. And uh, yeah, there would uh, some prompt that I do not want to install. Show welcome page on startup. Yes. And let me just open a folder. I have a pre-existing folder here. Uh, but yeah, I would like to create a new one. And I'll just name it as CPP. Okay. And uh, go inside it and select the folder itself. Okay. And just click trust. Yes, I trust the authors. And I think we can now start uh, working on our first C++ program. So let me just close this welcome tab and create a new file. And let's try to name it as my first, okay, dot cpp. Okay. And now we do not want to install the pre-released version uh, and other things as well. And yes, uh, I think we can now start coding our first uh, program. So we have here, we have include IO stream. Okay. And then uh, we have using namespace std. Then you have the main function. Okay. Oops. And you have return zero. Okay. Of course, we would want to have it printed out, which is hello world. And this is the de facto example for any programming language that we have. And how do we compile this one? You would see a or an icon at the upper right corner of your window. Okay, and if you will try to drag down, you have a different different selections here. Now, this is from the code runner, and these two are from the standard Microsoft plugin, which requires also a different configuration. Okay, so let's now try to run the code and test it first. So we'll be running the code. Okay, and you would see here that uh, it seems like we have some linking errors. Uh, what do you call this? We have to run or configure the compiler first. Okay. And so uh, with uh, this one, okay, let's try now to access the code runner that we are using. And uh, with this, uh, you would see here on on our what we call this on our uh, program here, we would like to access. No, I'm sorry, this one, <laughs> the extension settings. Okay, so we wanted to access the extension settings, and you would see here the executor map the code runner executor map this is where you configure all of the compilers that uh you have here okay and so uh for this as what you can see it's using the you know the basic g++ 
And uh, in our compiler, okay, uh, what we wanted to do here is to actually use, okay, we wanted to actually use the Ming WG++ compiler. So let me just copy this one. Copy. Okay, and uh, going back to our Visual Studio Code. Let's now try to replace uh, this program here with, I mean, the compiler here with our compiler, which is G++. And so let me just save it. And let's now try to go back again to our program. So notice that it is important for you to have your path to be configured first. Okay, and let me try to run the code again. Okay, so if we encounter this error, which is win main, okay, that simply means that we haven't saved yet our file. And let's now try to save it. Okay, and let's now try to run the code again. Okay, and yeah, we were able to generate our executable file and compiled our program with no problems at all. Okay, and I hope this would enable you to use Visual Studio Code and newer uh, G++ compiler in your future programs. Okay.